here's the installation uh, on Chris's airplane, our, uh, our shop uh, uh, production manager. Nice. And, um, you know, we did our best to keep it clean and, and streamlined. I think probably the most impressive view of the installation is from the side. Um, we, we did not significantly really at all modify the cowling. Uh, and that was the goal. So uh, we have um, our own um, uh, radiator system. Now we're not using Rotax radiators and that's, you know, one in the interest of cost. Uh, you know, we're about uh, providing good solutions for people on a little bit more of a budget and, uh, you know, trying to make this somewhat realistic for people to afford. Um, it, although this is definitely a more expensive engine installation option, we wanted to go with these uh, radiators and we've got dual radiators. Now, one of these radiators is similar in size to the fin area needed if you're only running one, one radiator. And so in talking to Rotax, uh, especially with a tighter cowling installation and the IS generating a little bit more heat um, with um, not having fuel in the intake, um, we wanted to make sure we had really good cooling, uh, especially on the ground and taxiing, which tends to be probably the most challenging uh, cooling uh, situation for the IS in particular. And we stuck with the Sonic side cowling exits. So um, we should have a lot of draw on the cowling. We do have a lot of draw on the cowling and we'll have really, really good cooling and we're not creating cooling drag by having a big flat plate radiator, you know, stuck out in the front of the cowling and that's integral to the design. So does that mean uh, the bottom of your cowling basically seals up and butts to the bottom of your fuselage and just the exits out the sides only? Yeah, so it's just the side exits with a small exit for the exhaust, which I'll show you in a minute. Okay. But I'll just show you the cowling real quick. But just to clarify what you said, in reality, you could run on one radiator. It's it's enough volume, but for ground handling purposes, you're putting two on there, correct? Yeah, I mean, we just wanted to be really conservative because Rotex has told us that the uh, the engine's thermostat will will prevent it from overcooling um and controlling the, sure. the water through the engine so we should be in really good shape so there you can see the right hand side radiator exit we have mm -hmm. a small NACA inlet for uh intake air for the gear, <laughs> the gear legs here so again yeah we're just really wanting to keep it tight and uh, streamlined and uh, retain that legendary performance that we're known for uh, with, with this airplane, with this engine installation. Of course, the Rotax doesn't need any baffles in the installation, so that saves a little bit of time. We are partnering with great companies like Dynon Avionics at Dynon.com, AirTech Coatings at AirTechCoatings.com, Aviation Youth Magazine at AviationUSA.com. The Aviators Clinic at aviatorsclinic.com. Take a moment to go visit their websites at the links found below in the description of this video. And visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, affiliate products, aviation merchandise, and so much more. Uh, this has taken us a tremendous amount of time to develop this installation, but when we're done and we have factory parts, um, it should be very much a plug and play type of installation. Um, the other thing you'll notice here is a prop hub extension, and that's something that we've needed, you know, that we've identified long ago is needed for the installation to fit inside of our cowling. This is our own prop hub extension that we'll be selling. Um, it is um, uh, relatively short, but it's still a spool type. Uh, so it's probably one of the shortest spool type prop extensions you're going to be able to buy. Um, and a couple of reasons for that. One is that um, we want to be able to use our, our spinner and, sure. and crutch plate, yeah. uh, which uh, uh, you know is really important to the form factor and streamline of the cowl. Um, with the sh other short like saber extensions, they have threaded inserts and you have to safety wire the bolts at the heads. So the only thing you can really do with those is like a skull cap type of the spinner. Sure. Um, the, other, the other purpose here is to create a little more clearance for the cowling. Um, Rotaxes um, 912s uh, do shake a bit, uh, particularly on shutdown. 
and we don't want the uh, the the prop hub and extension to uh, contact the cowling and start eroding the cowling. So we create a little bit more clearance there for the cowling using the spool type, although we do have the bolts in there, but that's just uh, giving us the, the most clearance that we can have. Another thing that's really gonna help with, uh, really helps with the not having as much shaking is having a lightweight prop. So we use the Sensenic um, fixed pitch, a wood core composite coated prop. And uh, this is a prop that Sonic's customers have been using with 912s, um, 100 horse 912s for a while now. And Sensenix has gotten good reports from it. Um, it is a pretty wicked prop um, in terms of pitch and diameter. Of course, we are a bit diameter limited because we sit close to the ground. And um, so uh, there's a lot of pitch in this prop. What, what size prop is this? So this is, I'm just going to read the serial number here, the info, because I don't remember. Oh, yeah, here we go. It's a, a 60 by 82. Oh, wow. Okay. 82 I, inch pitch. And what would you typically run on your, your uh, Aero V as far as a length? 54 by 44. Okay. So it's it's significantly, I mean. Yeah, it's, the turbo is a little bit more pitched than that, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is more than Jabra 3300 prop or anything. Um, so it's been, it's been working, working for our customers. It um, looks like it'd be a very nice, uh, clean installation. Um, very nice. Well, it's, it's very exciting to see, uh, different options, uh, coming available for that installation and for your aircraft. And, uh, I know there's a lot of different, um, um, camps, if you will, right. I've, I've done engine week and I'll probably do engine week again this year. I skipped last year, but, um, I've, I've come to find out that engines are more or less like a sports team or even a religion. Once people sign into one camp or another, that is the only one they, they're in pretty much. Right. So 